If you have a Bible, open up to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, we're going to look at that in just a second. So as always, I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you're having a good week. Uh, if you ever need anything, please don't be afraid to reach out to me, the elders or the deacons. I know I'm starting to get really excited because it feels like all this is kind of starting to come to an end. You know, the elders announced and, you know, it's it's known now that we're going to get to go back to worship soon. And obviously things aren't going to be completely back to normal, but I'm just ready for things to go a little more normal. And I'm just so excited to see everyone. I don't care how far apart we have to be in the auditorium. I'm just tired of preaching to an empty auditorium. And I'm ready to see everyone, ready to see the teenagers, ready to get that Bible class, ready to get to do all kinds of different things like that. And I hope you're excited. So what I wanted to start with today is I kind of want to review what we've been looking at with all the with all these Wednesday devotionals and just go over all the things we've talked about before we go into this new one today. So we started a series uh, looking at tests and trials and how to handle them and you know how to handle tough situations. And we looked we started off by looking in James chapter one. And looking at what tests and trials are and where they come from and why they come and you know how our attitude can be toward them and then what we've done is we've looked at different bible characters and seen how they've handled things either in the wrong way that we know we shouldn't do or maybe how they handle things in the right way and things we shouldn't do so we started off by looking at thomas known as doubting thomas because he didn't believe that jesus was back and he wasn't going to believe it until he actually got to see it and put his hands on it and so our main lesson from that was our first instinct sometimes is to doubt and when we're met with tough situations we want to doubt and that can't be our first instinct uh, then we looked at the apostles and we talked about how you get through tough situations through tests and through trials how you are able to get through those is all about your perspective and how you look at it you know the apostles were just honored to get to suffer for jesus and we have to have the same mindset that we're just honored to get to suffer for him for his name then we looked at the rich young man and, you know, I asked the question, what was the one thing that keeps you from serving God that you should? You know, what is that one test, that one trial? What's the one thing that can keep you from doing what you need to do? And you need to either work on getting rid of that thing or talk to somebody about that thing, whatever it is. You know, what is that one thing? Then we looked at Cain and there were so many different lessons we can learn from Cain. Uh, the main thing that I wanted to get from it was... You know, God wants things in the right way. You know, there's a right way to serve God and to worship God, and there's a wrong way. And, you know, God has the ability to have things how he wants them. But there's reasons behind why God wants the way wants things done his way. And so we looked at Cain, and we talked about how, you know, we can either look at how we're wrong, and we can be better from it, or we can look at how we're wrong and get upset about it and maybe take it out on other people which is not the correct way and we talked about with Cain you know during this time are we still worshiping God the exact same way we would on Sunday morning you know the only thing that should be different is your location you should still have the same heart the same mindsets and we're still doing all the same actions you should dress the exact same way everything should be the same because our worship is not for other people and it's not for the fact that we get to be with other people and it's not for us it's for God it's about our attitude and our worship why we do that. And then last week we looked at Mary. Uh, before Mother's Day, we talked about Mary and the test that she had to face, you know, becoming pregnant, you know, it was completely not planned in her life and it was just sprung upon her. And how she was able to get through that was the fact that she wanted to serve God. And if that's how God needed her, that's how she was going to serve. So today what I want to do is I'm going to look in Luke chapter 15 and we're going to look at the prodigal son. Most of you have probably heard the story of the prodigal son a good bit, and you've heard different lessons from it. So what I want to do is I want to look at the prodigal son and see first how he how he got himself in the situation he was in. But then what we're going to do is we're going to see how he handled things in the right way, and I hope we can apply them to our lives. So Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 11, it says, And he said, There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the field to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. 
But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? I will rise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And, and he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, he saw, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Spring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fat and calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. So this week, we're going to look at this story from the younger son's point of view. So the younger son wanted to take his his share of the wealth, his share of the property, and he wanted to take it, and he wanted to go. He said, Father, give it to me. So the father gave it to him, and he left. And we know that a famine came, and he was just in a horrible situation, as low as he could go, working with pigs, and he just wanted to be fed like the pigs were fed. And he found himself in a horrible situation. And we can apply that to our lives because sometimes we're met with tests and trials. Sometimes we can find ourselves feeling like we're at the very bottom. Like we can't go any lower. And sometimes it feels like we can't get, any, can't get out of it. Like we can't go higher. And we find ourselves in a situation that's just so tough and so difficult. And it feels like we just can't get ourselves out of it. I know speaking in my life, you know, I, I've lived a great life, but everybody goes through situations where they just feel sad and they just don't feel normal. And they just, they feel like they've been tested and tried so much and they're just at the very bottom. And you do things and you put yourselves in situations that you don't need to be in. And if you remember when we started off this series, looking in James chapter one, one thing that I mentioned was when we were met with tests and trials, the first thing we want to do is blame God and say that he did it. But a lot of times it's our own fault. We put ourselves in this situation. You know, we did things wrong and here we are in a tough situation because of mistakes that we've made. And maybe that's you right now. And I know I've been in that situation where I've dug myself in a hole and I've been in a horrible, horrible, tough, trying time. But there's a lesson we can learn here from the prodigal son. And we know this is the parable of Jesus and this is Jesus talking. And he's taught the relationship is us and the father. And the way that the son handled things correctly is he realized that he can go back to his father. And that's something that we need to realize. It doesn't matter how bad things get, how bad we mess up. It doesn't matter what goes on in our lives. When we feel like we're as low as we can go, we can always go back to the father. And you see how the son... Uh, approached the situation he was just hoping to go back to his father and be a servant he wanted to work for him because even the servants had better lives than he was living so he wasn't wanting to go back and have everything back to normal and be be the son he was wanting to go back and just be a servant but when his father saw him he ran with open arms and embraced him and hugged him and kissed him and he was so glad that he came back and he put him back at the highest possible position he could be in and that's what god does with us when we're met with tests and trials and we're at the very bottom and we feel like we can't go up if we just come back to god he runs at us with open arms with an open heart and he hugs us and he kisses kisses us and he brings us back and he's so thankful and we're right back where we need to be it's not just a situation where god just forgives us and moves on it's a situation where god completely wipes everything away and is so glad we're back and what's great is that he will do it over and over and over for us. So the lesson that I want us to learn here from the prodigal son is when you're met with tests and you're met with trials, you might mess up and you might put yourself in a situation that you don't need to be in. But what's great is you can always come back to God. It's the greatest blessing ever. You just have to make that decision. Do I want to come back? I thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm ready to stop making these Wednesday devotionals and get to be back with all of you. But I hope that as we continue looking at these people that have gone through tests and trials, we can be better from it and find ourselves, when, we're, when we find ourselves in bad situations, we'll be able to come out of them.